Good morning and welcome to Paul T's World. And in this video, we're going to have a look at the tropical border, my tropical plants that are in fact mostly quite hardy in my climate. I'm in the northwest of England, near the coast, in zone 9A. And I'd just like to point out that the zone system only refers to the average lowest winter temperature. It doesn't take into account the rainfall, the type of soil, the humidity, how many of those low frosts you have, just how low those frosts are. I mean, zone 9A, that's the same as Houston, Texas, but our winters are totally different. Our summers are totally different. Our general climate, the humidity is different. However, the average lowest temperature in both Houston and where I am here is the same. And that's the only similarity that you get with the zone system. Just as a reminder, let's have a little look at a video I did the summer before last, and we can see what the tropical plants look like in that border. So we'll see if I've lost any and how they've done over the year. Now that we've seen what this border looked like a year and a half ago, let's check it out now and see what I will do with them over winter, if anything. The first plant, this rather spectacular irisene, is not hardy. So these here are from cuttings I did last year. Or you could dig them up and keep them in the house over winter, but I prefer not to have my outdoor plants in the house over winter. The dwarf cannas survived okay in the ground. Here was where I had the pink passion cordyline. Now that's not very hardy, and indeed it died last year. But what didn't, and what's interesting, is this fan palm. It's being rather overshadowed by this dahlia at the moment. But this fan palm survived well with all the snow on it. It looked like it was going to die because the little fronds that were coming out of the center here, the spears, they were rotting, and so I pulled them out and I thought that I would lose this palm. But in fact, it is a hardy palm, the European fan palm. It's sending up more little shoots from the side here, and it will be fine, although it was knocked back quite a bit by the severe winter last winter. I say severe, by most people's standards around the world, it wasn't severe, but for us on the coast, Yes, it was. We got down to minus 10 centigrade or so. The dahlias here, they're just about finishing off for the season. I won't lift those dahlias. They'll stay in the ground over winter. The persicaria, purple fantasy, tough as old boots. That'll stay in the ground. Now this Durban canna here, very pretty canna. See if I can just get this banana leaf out of the way. There we are, very pretty. Not as tall as it was last year. And I thought I'd actually lost it last winter because I, again, I leave all the cannas that are in the ground, I leave them in the ground. But 
by end of June, it started to shoot again. Now the Abyssinian red banana, false banana, this is not hardy in my climate. It won't take a frost. Probably doesn't like it much below five centigrade. And what I did with this one is I did dig this up, turned it upside down for two or three weeks to let the water out because it's full of water in here. Dried it off, turned it back the right way and just kept it in the house, totally dry over winter. I cut it back probably to there. And in fact, because of all the energy down here, it sent up leaves, green leaves during the winter. So that is one of the few plants that I actually take in over the winter. Here we have more Pretoria. This was just one or two. It's doing well. I'll leave it until the first frosts and when it blackens off a little bit, I'll simply cut off the leaves and the stems about to here and leave it over the winter. Oh, and here we've got a little colocasia. A big colocasia, a very big colocasia. This is pink china and pink china is totally hardy in our climate, all over Britain really. So you can leave pink china in the ground. And so all those came from one little plant that I bought two years ago. Tetrapanax, again it's hardy. Might lose some leaves, but they'll come back. In fact, it could do with losing some leaves because it's lying right over my Fatsia japonica. And this is spider's web. Again, totally hardy. Through here, we have some more colocasia. Again, pink china. I did plant an Escalente down there, Colocage Escalente, and it didn't survive. I didn't expect it to. And we've got three rather little and cute bananas. Musa Baju, the hardy banana. Once again, totally hardy in Britain. I think it's okay down to about minus 14 or so. They're root hardy. So you do lose the growth Here's, here's last year's banana, there. And it's sent up one, two, three pops. Many people protect their bananas. They put a little cage round, fill it with straw, and the reason they do that is they want to retain the height of the banana. Because the banana, this banana was pretty high last year and did really well. I didn't protect it. My plants get protected the least possible and a hardy banana doesn't get protected at all. <gasps> oh, whoa. So my bananas die right back and then come again in the spring. And that's how I prefer it. I don't want to faff around too much with my tropical plants. And next time we'll have a look at overwintering the Brugmansias but only once the first frosts have arrived. And I'll see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.